Introduction. I'm Ellie Bub. Hey, Bubbly Tees. After your week's waiting of summer logs, I present to you the third episode. In today's video, we will be following a Bob Ross tutorial. Yes, from the legend himself. Bob Ross. And it has been a concurrent trend in YouTube to follow painting tutorials, so I decided that I would do it as well. So without further ado, let's get started. For my quest, I decided to use a canvas because copy paper is way out of my league. So we're going to go ahead and start off because I have all my materials ready. And yeah, let's just go ahead and look into the video. So the painting tutorial I'll be following today by Bob Ross is Valley View, season 21, episode one. So hopefully this goes well. I just thought it was looked pretty easy because this is my first time following a painting tutorial, but now I'm just gonna go ahead and get my paintbrush. So I think this one seems pretty accurate. Um, so I looked into the video and apparently he already started the bottom portion of the painting. And I'm probably gonna have to turn it this way because that's how the painting is formatted. There will be a small preview in like somewhere in the part of the video, so. Look out for that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab out my paints and do the bottom portion since it's already been started. So I'm just gonna go ahead and it seems a little bit brownish, greenish, yellowish. So I'm just gonna put a glob of green paint right here. The green is done, now we're gonna go with the yellow. All right, so I mixed up the color. It looks like that. It looks pretty disgusting, but that is the color that he was using. So I'm just gonna use this brush for the bottom parts. And now it looks pure black. Okay, great. One second. I'm gonna keep mixing until I find the perfect mixture. I finished the bottom portion and now we're gonna go ahead and work on the actual video which is the rest of it all right now we just then let that dry then we've applied some transparent color down here on the bottom of this and today I've used a little sap green and Van Dyke brown mixed together and it's still wet the black gesso has dried but the transparent color on top here is still wet okay and then the top we've just covered a little bit of liquid white and it just makes the the canvas nice and wet and slick and it, it allows us to actually blend color on the canvas rather than working ourselves to death on the palette. So I tell you what, let's just take off and have some fun today. Let's start with this little two inch brush here. Here we'll go right into a small amount of the phthalo blue. Okay, so he uses blue. We have the exact color we need to use. Okay, and he uses big amounts, but um, since I'm working with such a small amount here, I'm going to just use a small amount. I got my blue, and now it's time to put it in the canvas. Okay, so it's like literally crossing, okay. Oh geez, that is like so dark, okay. Well, uh, I might just add white later or something, I don't know. X's, little crisscross strokes. And we'll work all the way across the top. Yeah, sorry. I might just add a teensy bit of white onto my palette. You know, we're making ours in unique. This is unique. This is the definition of unique. Okay, that is... <laughs> That's really changing. Okay. This is the closest I could get to his painting because um, I didn't add the liquid white, but um, here I did mixed variations. I added a lot of white paint, at least, at the bottom part, and uh, now we're ready to move on to the next step. Take some black, a little Prussian blue, some alizarin crimson, and we just mix those together. I'd even put a little Van Dyke brown in there just to dull it down some. 
where, where does our mountain live? And I think in my world, it's going to live maybe right there. I think that's good for the mountains. So of course I don't have a blade, so I just ended up using another brush. No pressure, no pressure, touch. That is terrible, oh my gosh. I I'm still adding pressure. Think about where light would strike. Okay, let's go right in here, zoom. Gotta make those little noises or, or it doesn't work right. So we're gonna go zoom. So zoom. <laughs> I think it's okay. We'll use a little bit of that mountain color with it, and a little bit of phthalo blue with it. What the heck? Okay, so I haven't been keeping track of what I've been recording or not, so here's what I have so far. So I did the lighting on the mountains, I did the bottom, I don't know what this is supposed to be. I think this is supposed to be trees, probably, and here is the mist that I kind of failed, but I tried to fix it, and I, yeah. We need to follow these angles need to follow these angles. If you don't, it just absolutely won't look right. Vary the colors between darker green and lighter green, back and forth a little. Just a little, maybe sort of determine where you think a little tree would live right here. much closer to us so they're darker they're much darker than this background back here just tap down with a fan brush this is one of the neatest ways that i've ever come up with in making the illusion of a lot of little trees that live far away guy right up here in the front row so he can see all of this too maybe there we go let's put some highlights on that we'll take a little little bit of this color we've made the trees out of because it has blue in it creates the illusion of shadows and makes depth in the tree. Otherwise, it'll be a very flat little tree. <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want any flat trees. We want trees that, son of a gun, have personalities. We can go with a two inch brush. It all works very well. But if you want these hangy down looking limbs like this, I find it much better to use this oval brush. There.
this is where you make all those old hangy down limbs. And we're going straight in with a brush, straight in, and just touching. Just touching, letting those top part of the bristles, just the top part of the bristles touch. Here's the paint. This is like my last circle I'm gonna be using. You have to make a big decision. Where is, where is your water? I want some water in here. This is supposed to be water? Okay, I did not know this water. All right, let me move that. This is supposed to be water. Wow, okay. Straight down. It's important that it comes straight down. I did not know that was water. All right, please don't mess this up. Okay, I'm just gonna dab a little bit there. Oh, shoot, I messed that up. My painting was good the first time, and now it's just... What the heck is this? Alright. Welp, that's water. <laughs> and that'll create the illusion of water. That easy. I'm gonna take a one inch brush, put a little liquid white on it, and go right through some of that color. Just a nice green color. And let's back in here, put the indication of just a happy little bush or two that lives right here. That's a bush. I'm gonna say that's a bush. That's land, guys. That is land. That is what you call pure land. So, I'm gonna be like way careful with this. My mind is telling me to be careful with this. Maybe we can put another bank over here. In your world, you make these decisions, decide where all these little things are. Alright, my tree looks like it's in the back. Take a little touch of the liquid white. Now we put on the highlights again. This separates. Just separates. It's just straight liquid white. A few little ripples here and there. Shoot, we about have to finish painting. Now that is pure magic. I think, I, I think we'll call that one done. But this is a good example of how easy this technique is, so I look forward to seeing you in the next show. And until then, happy painting. God bless my friend. Oh my gosh. All right, that was the end of the painting tutorial. Sorry if my setup's kind of messy. This is my paint palette after like a lot of mixing colors. But dun, 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 dun. so here is my painting that I did by following a Bob Ross tutorial. So it is here's the mountains, here's the trees, here is the so-called water and it looks amazing and i didn't know i could do this actually this is great thank you so much bob ross thank you so much for helping me discover my artistic abilities now i can literally finish my quest of being a full-on artist anyways um so yeah that was pretty fun actually i'm gonna rate this overall experience a nine out of ten but the painting, uh, I, I mean, like, the look of the water, like, seriously. But it was pretty fun. I really enjoyed it. So maybe this painting, I'll rate this painting an 8 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching Summer Logs, and hope you enjoyed. Um, more episodes are coming out soon, and yeah. Thank you for staying here and watching me do this painting. And goodbye!